Hello everybody and welcome to this Jade Harvester build. In this video I'm completing a Greater Rift 77 which I just recorded um, which happens to be my personal best so far. Uh, so far I've been trying to run with the Spirit Vessel um, as a passive and a lot of other things but I found that this simply does not do enough damage. So I thought to myself how to improve my damage and at the same time keep me from not dying because if I want to switch out a spirit vessel for something else I need something to keep myself alive because what happened to me when I was running with the spirit vessel uh, rather I should wind up and tell me tell you my my build I'm running with the poison setup uh, I'm running with the local swarm cloud of insects and the vile hive I'm running with the uh, Soul Harvest, Spirit Walk Jaunt, Horrified Frightening Aspect, and as passive I have Confidence Ritual, Grave Injustice, Creeping Death, and in this video I'm running with Fetish Sycophants. For my items I run with the Endless Walk set, which is the Traveler's Pledge and the Compass Rose. I run with the Haunting Girdle, and I run with um, Convention of Elements. This is all pretty standard. Um, the reason I wanted to show this video was that I switched out Spirit Vessel for Fetish Sycophants because of the um, Endless Walk set. The Endless Walk uh, reduces damage taken uh, when moving and increases damage done when standing still. So without the Fetish Sycophants I was moving a lot to dodge any and all attacks that were coming my way. because with the Jade Harvester set you get around 2 shotted, so you don't really want to get hit all that much, which means you have to run a lot. This is all good and dandy for a lot of the time, but if you're not standing still at any given time, you will never get the damage bonus from the Endless Walk set. And this is the reason why I almost considered going back to the Hellfire Amulet and the Unity setup because that way I at least get some of the damage done. Um, but I didn't really go that far. Um, I needed the damage uh, and I figured why not try the best of both worlds. I wanted to run with both the Haunting Girdle for the quick um, haunts and the Build of Transcendence. But that's not possible, so how to do both? Answer being going with the Fitch Sycophants as a passive. Now, I have four passives I could switch them up for. Either the uh, Spirit Vessel, Creeping Death, Grave Injustice or Confidence Ritual. Creeping Death is mandatory, you need that. Yeah. Same goes for Grave Injustice. So my choices were to ditch either Confidence Ritual or Spirit Vessel. So, after failing at Greater Rift 77 about 15 or 20 times, this uh, run that you see here is my first try where I switched out Spirit Vessel for Fetish Sycophants. And even though I die a lot, and even though I don't play particularly well, the damage increase is so huge from being able to stand still that things just melt in comparison to um, running with the spirit vessel. You see right here I'm standing in the middle of this group and I'm standing still and I'm dying but I'm standing still. I've died a few times so far and I will die a few times more um, because well this is my first run I don't really know how much damage the fetishes will actually support. Um, I don't really know when to play offensive and when to play defensive so I just run into the middle and trying to see when I die. This is just the way I, I play. I try to figure out when I die and then slowly but steadily I try to reduce the amounts of time that I die. Um, so this was nothing but a test run for me to be honest. I just wanted to see if I could um, stay alive without the second life. If I could uh, avoid dying as much because I had my fears that I was dying just as much with the spirit vessel. Um, 
actually twice as much because the passive uh, gives an extra life. Um, but the defenses are so much less without the circumstance that you just die a whole lot more, and you, in, in addition, you deal less damage. Um, so, anyways, when I die, you see the first thing that I do is go in and reapply uh, the uh, the stacks for the soul harvest. So I have ten of them. This gives me uh, damage decrease, damage increase, and most importantly, movement speed. Um, the thing with the fetish sycophants are, as you can see in the top left corner, they die pretty much all the time. They don't have that much health, and then when, I'm, when they're standing in the middle of a big group like that, they, they die. The good thing about them dying is it means they're taking some hits. Um, but it can be difficult to get them up and running to get 15 at a time when you die in a situation like I just did. So what you need to do is just keep spamming Haunt as much as possible. Uh, and don't really mind them dying, um, because as you see right here, they are all standing still, in a big group, all dying. And what happened here was that I was, there was just this little skeleton thingy with like no health that was blocking me. Um, when they're dying uh, in the middle of the things, they stand still in the middle of the things, which keeps them grouped up. I've seen from some other J players that they don't like the fetish sycophants because they feel like the mobs spread out too much. To be honest, I find the exact opposite to be the case. Um, the fetish sycophants seem to spawn where the haunt hits, which in many cases will be in the middle of the group. Um, and they will take aggro in the middle of the group. So when I'm spamming a um, elite target in the middle of the group and I'm trying to, to get all the other mobs to go and join him. Um, it's much easier when a fetish sycophant is taking the aggro inside the group than w if they were chasing me outside the group. So you see, um, I've been chasing them down south here, I find a good position and then I go in and boom. This is what Jade is all about. If you um, were noticing, I was standing still up to about 60% bonus damage before I went in. Um, this is to take advantage of the Compass Rose and uh, Traveler's Pledge, um, which is, um, well, what you need to do. Uh, what I'm doing here is uh, taking <laughs> the uh, testing phase a bit too far. Um, I should never have uh, engaged this group, um, and you'll see how much time I actually lose doing it, and how stubbornly I keep going at it, because to me this is, this is a test run. Um, I want to see how much I'm able to dodge dying when I'm fighting in small places with the arcane enchanted and mortar and whatever these are. Um, and um, well, even though I lose a lot of time, they give some progression, um, but, but I wouldn't recommend uh, going in in a place like this because you'll see the epic rain of mortars combined with a complete set of uh, everything else basically um, this is just too risky um, there are not enough maps the uh, the bus is too difficult to hit because I have to run all the time um, I swear I hit the spirit walk here but <laughs> let that, let's just let, let that go. Um, there, there are many reasons of why I shouldn't have done this. Um, <laughs> the main ones are that I can't pull any more maps. Uh, there are only like 10, 15 maps here, and they aren't dying. So I have the full cooldown of my spirit walk at all times, and I have a lot of cooldown on my soul harvest at all times. And um, even though I keep going in and keep doing the right thing, standing still, going in, booming, and nothing's dying, which makes it very risky in an already risky position with a difficult bus. Um, but um, at least the fetish sycophants are in the middle of the things, keeping them relatively stacked up. Um, like this, like this, boom, boom, boom. 
uh, and I probably should have gone out to the left to pick up the bonus damage uh, from my follower. Um, but from here on out, because I have the young dang doe or whatever it's called from on my uh, follower, and uh, any single elite is hit and stunned all the time. <laughs> um, here I figure I won the game because I found the uh, <laughs> a very important um, conduit pylon, um, but I suck at this game, so I die. <laughs> and uh, here I figure I've lost. There is there's no way that I can get enough progression in short enough time um, to actually pull this off because I have died so many times that the cooldown and respawning is so long as you see right now. Uh, I get lucky with a, a shield pylon later on, otherwise I, sh I wouldn't have made it. Um, and uh, this was good map, this was uh, good maps, um, relatively good maps. Um, but I didn't play that well, um, which makes me think that this setup could actually do a lot more. Um, again, the, the reason I wanted to show this is because even though that uh, pretty much everybody else is saying that you need Spirit Vessel, um, I want to show you that you really don't. Um, what you need to do is not die. Um, Spirit Vessel is very... Uh, negative way to play in my opinion you assume that you're going to die you play after wanting to die um, I, I, I don't like that that um, that way of playing to expect and to hope to die um, because you don't have confidence into this in your own play I don't like that um, I suppose that uh, you could keep spirit vessel and let go of confidence ritual um, to increase your damage done um, to nearby targets, 25% damage is a lot. Um, but um, if you really do like the spirit vessel, I suppose you could still run it. But uh, if you want to push the highest greater rifts, uh, you you wouldn't need spirit vessel. Um, if you learn when you can go in, um, when to stand on the edge of the group, um, just in case your spirit uh, walk doesn't proc uh, because you don't kill enough mobs in the group yes. and all that stuff um, you you shouldn't actually die more than two or three times and the damage increase uh, from losing spirit vessel and gaining the uh, ability to stand still is way more than the time you lose from dying two or three times um, Yeah, uh, also I wanted to mention that the follower, uh, the setup I'm going with, is actually um, pretty stun heavy. She's got the Yung Dang Do, um, she's got S of Johan, the Weird Watch, which uh, stuns on lightning damage, and the Oculus Ring. Um, and of course, a, uh, you can, your follower cannot die thingy. <laughs> uh, I've stacked cooldown reduction and uh, attack speed. Um, on everything except the Yung Dang Do because I haven't got the um, the row yet. Um, but the reason I'm running with an old Oculus Ring, which only increases damage by 35% in the little area, is because you can stack that one up to 16% attack speed, uh, which makes the um, Enchantress, as you see, like a machine gun. Uh, and when the Rift Guardian is below 25% health, I find that Enchantress is better than the um, the Templar because she stands unranged and can hit at any time without moving, uh, which makes her spamming that much better. Um, except for right now when she's just watching. Um, but at this point, she will attack if I don't move. So when the boss is stunned, as you see, if I don't move. Now I move, which makes him not stunned. Um, and this is uh, this is the setup that I like because the last 25% on the Rift Guardian is where you deal the most damage, which is why you should stand still the most, um, which the Enchantress helps with more than the, the, than the Templar. So you'll see my gear here, 
It's pretty pretty good rolls. I haven't augmented that much of it. And um, well, there are rooms for improvement, especially on my um, the augmenting and my paragon levels. This is definitely 80 plus um, doable, and I hope to do that and show it to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.